If your goal is to become a SOC analyst and you aren't sure where or how to get started, well, you come to the right place. In this video, I'll provide you with my 10 step process and an action plan that is focused on learning the skills to become a SOC analyst. Now, some of these resources will cost money, but I am also aware that some folks aren't in the financial position to purchase trainings. So I'll also be providing some free alternatives, but do keep in mind that going down this route can take a longer time compared to the paid route. But before I do begin, if this is your first time seeing my video, hello, my name is Steven and I have been working in the cybersecurity industry for over eight years now, focusing within the security operations domain. I do provide mentorship for those that want to become a SOC analyst. And over the past year, I am happy to say that a handful of folks were able to achieve their goal and land a job as a SOC analyst. I wanna share with you the same action plan with some bonuses that I provide to my mentees. But do note that by following this plan, it isn't going to guarantee you anything but it will get you closer to learning the right skill sets that is required to become a SOC analyst. You will need to put in the work and effort such as networking, self-learning, and documentation to get ahead of the curve. With that being said, let's start off with step number one, which is learn information technology, AKA IT. So let me break down how to start your IT journey before diving into cybersecurity. If you're brand new to the field, I would highly recommend that you put a lot of time into building a strong IT foundation, as that will benefit you throughout your entire cybersecurity career. What I personally recommend for a paid course is enrolling into CBT Nuggets with Keith Barker and James Conrad for a plus certification training. Now you might ask, why CBT Nuggets? Well, with my experience with these particular instructors, have been pretty great, and they do a wonderful job at breaking down complex concepts. A free alternative to CBT Nuggets would be a course created by Google focusing on IT support, which should provide you with a high-level overview of IT. In addition to Google, there is also a ton of free resources that you can find on YouTube. For example, Professor Messer has some free IT training videos that you can follow along with. Kev Tech IT Support has created a bunch of content surrounding IT, and also provides many different courses that are extremely affordable. Speaking of affordability, TCM Security has a free IT course called Practical Help Desk that will touch on the basics of IT and equip you with the knowledge to work as a help desk analyst. In addition to this course, they do also offer a course called Linux 100, which will introduce you to Linux. And trust me, if you work in IT, you are going to touch Linux eventually. So might as well learn it now while you're still fresh. While you're learning, you should look into some cheap computer parts so eventually you can build your own lab computer. It is honestly, hands down, one of the best ways to learn. Also, I would recommend that you volunteer your time to your friends and family and do help them with any IT related problems. Because hey, dealing with real world tech problems will level up your troubleshooting and research skills. Depending on your schedule, I would say that this will take you about six months of dedicated learning to help you grasp the basics of IT. Now, once you're feeling solid about your IT knowledge, that is when you're ready to move on to the next step, which is learn networking. As a SOC analyst, learning networking is extremely important and is something that you should not rush to complete, but rather take your time and really learn as much as you possibly can about this topic. Because let's be honest, Without networking, you'll have a difficult time with analyzing logs, which is your core responsibility as a SOC analyst. I often say that networking is like learning the rules of the road. If you're a driver, wouldn't you agree that knowing the rules of the road is extremely important? Know your protocols, learn the terminology, and understand how to interpret network telemetry, and you'll be in a good spot. Here is what I would recommend you take to help you learn networking concepts. As a free option, Google has a section within their IT support course about networking, but I would also supplement that with Professor Messer as he does teach topics that relate to Network Plus, which is a network certification offered by CompTIA. In addition to Professor Messer, you could also look into trainings offered by Cisco called Network Technician, where it'll teach you network fundamentals. 
As a paid option, I would recommend either Network Plus or CCNA training with Keith Barker that is offered by CBT Nuggets. I've taken the CCNA training in the past with Keith Barker, and honestly, he is the reason why I understand networking today. While you're learning networking, I would highly encourage you to try and craft up a logical diagram of your home network so you can visualize how your data is flowing within your environment. If you wanted to take it to the next level, you can think about purchasing a managed switch and or firewall so you can begin implementing VLANs and access control list to tighten your network. Or if you don't want to go down that route, you can actually check out Packet Tracer or GNS3 for network simulations. Now, either route you choose to take, you'll start to apply the theory that you learned into practical real world experience. Because let's be honest, Reading about networking is one thing, but actually getting your hands dirty and configuring VLANs or troubleshooting, that is where the real learning happens. Depending on your schedule, I would say that this will take you about six months of dedicated learning to help you grasp the basics of networking. Once you're feeling solid about your networking knowledge, that is when you're ready to move on to the next step, which is security. Hopefully by this step, you've built yourself a solid foundation with IT and networking. Now we can get into the section where most people are excited for. This is where you'll start to learn the importance of cybersecurity and why it even exists. Some of the free trainings that I recommend are ISC Squared, Certified Cybersecurity, and Google's Cybersecurity Training. Both of these training courses will provide you with a high level overview of what you can expect in cybersecurity and to really show you if this is the industry that you want to get into. There is also Cisco that offers a learning path called Junior Cybersecurity Analyst, where it'll go over some of the fundamentals of cybersecurity as well. I would recommend taking all three if time permits. Sure, some of the topics will overlap, but I am certain that you'll learn something new. There are a ton of paid trainings available for Security Plus, but the one that I personally used, and you guessed it, was CBT Nuggets. And if you're looking for a free option, Professor Messer is a great choice. But if this teaching style is not for you, you can find a ton of free courses focusing on Security Plus on YouTube. Cybersecurity is quite large with multiple domains and it can be tempting to try and learn everything and anything when it comes to this industry. What this means is that it's quite tough to actually put a duration on how long learning cybersecurity would take. But I would say that if you're aiming to learn the topics for Security Plus, this would take you about four to six months. After you learn the basics of cybersecurity and grasp the terminology along with the importance of cybersecurity, you can then move on to step number four, which is SOC fundamentals. This is where you start putting all of your focus into learning everything you possibly can about security operations, but more importantly, the skills to become a SOC analyst. Now, as a reminder, your job as a junior SOC analyst is to triage alerts by analyzing logs sourcing from various data sources, such as firewalls, endpoints, applications, identity, and many more. You should also have an understanding of what and why certain tools exist, such as a SIM, SOAR, EDR, firewalls, and many others. So where can you get training that will help you with that? There are actually quite a few, and I'll provide a video on some of the resources that you can use. Additionally, there will be a PDF that will have all of the links to these resources. Splunk offers free training on their site and they got this awesome capture the flag called Boss of the SOC, where you can practice both your Splunk skills and investigation techniques. Anti-Siphon is amazing and they offer a pay what you can training for practical SOC skills. Try Hack Me, Let's Defend and Hack the Box has a SOC analyst learning path that is pretty great for beginners. TCM Security has a junior SOC analyst course at an extremely affordable price. Microsoft has free self-paced training for SE200, and this is a certificate program that is pretty popular among SOC analysts. My channel is a great resource, as you'll find projects, lab walkthroughs, and tips specifically for this role. And my course will also teach you how to ask better questions, provide you with investigation techniques, strengthen your report writing, and have you analyze a nasty compromise as a capstone. Plus, you'll come out with five solid SOC projects under your belt. 
By the end, you'll be able to confidently talk about the SOC and investigations. Plus, you'll know how to set up all of those popular SOC tools and even build SOAR playbooks. And those are just some of the resources to help you build SOC fundamentals. I know this can be quite overwhelming with so many options to choose from, but trust me when I say this, it doesn't matter which one you choose, as they will all teach you the same thing, more or less. The most important thing for you is to find out what style of teaching helps you learn the best and then go for that. Now that you got some SOC fundamentals under your belt, let's talk about the next step, which is certifications. One of the most popular questions I get when it comes to becoming a SOC analyst is, what certifications should I get? And to be honest, the answer is, it depends. See, some locations want you to have your Security Plus, whereas others don't care or opt for CISA Plus. My recommendation for you is to look at SOC analyst job postings that are around your area and then see what certifications come up frequently. One thing I do notice quite often is that many job roles want candidates to have Security Plus. So that is a certificate that I would try and obtain along with Microsoft SC200, which we'll touch on Azure, and that's about it. Sure, getting BTLO, CTD, CDSA, or even MDSA, which are all SOC related certifications is a great achievement, but I don't really see it benefiting you when it comes to applying for roles as recruiters and hiring managers aren't really asking for them, from my experience. But don't get me wrong, the training that prepares you for those certifications is extremely worth it. And I would highly encourage you to take a look into them. However, the certification is optional. To recap, do some research on SOC analyst roles around your area and see what certifications they are looking for. CompTIA Security Plus is quite safe and something that I always encourage people to get along with Microsoft SC200. Anything else is extra. Moving on to step number six, practical labs. This is probably one of, if not the most important step when it comes to becoming a SOC analyst. This is where you continue to apply the theory that you learned from steps one through five into practice, and also exposing yourself to different scenarios and situations. I cannot stress this enough, getting your hands dirty, so to speak, will differentiate you from your competitors. Some of the resources that I provide my mentees are Try Hack Me, Cyber Defenders, Blue Team Cyber Range, Let's Defend, Hack the Box, Malware Traffic Analysis, KC7, and The Defer Report. When you're tackling these resources, there will be a time where you get stuck and there is no shame in using AI to help you out or reading the solutions to help you understand. The main thing here is to try your best to learn as much as you possibly can and understand what exactly you're looking at. Step number seven, projects. The last few steps is where you start to shift your focus into making you stand out by starting with building yourself a portfolio with projects that are focused towards the security operations domain. There are a lot of different sites out there that will help you create a blog or a website to host your content. However, some of the sites that I recommend using is either LinkedIn, Medium, or GitHub. If you do choose to go with the GitHub route, I do have a video where I'll leave down below that will walk you through on how to create a portfolio, and that should help you get started. The objective here is to document your learnings and achievements to show proof of what you have accomplished. Here are five projects that you can add onto your portfolio that you can find on my channel. One, build a basic home lab, active directory project, SOC Automation Project, SOAR EDR Project, and the Mini SOC Project. By completing all five, you'll not only have a pretty solid portfolio, but you'll also gain a lot of confidence in your technical skills, which is huge. Step eight, professional profile. Now it's time to start building your professional profile to let recruiters know more about you and what you have done so far. If you haven't done so already, I would highly recommend that you create yourself a LinkedIn profile where it has a clear photo of you, contains your work experience, projects, and certifications. But more importantly, do make sure that you proofread and spell check your writing. Because remember, this is a professional profile. You want to pay attention to detail. Once you have your profile completed, it is time to move on to the next step, which is networking with others. To help increase your chances of landing that first job as a SOC analyst is to start networking with hiring managers and security professionals. There are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can join Reddit communities and reply to or create a topic to start a conversation. Join Discord communities and interact with others 
Maybe talk about a project that you recently completed. You could also attend industry events such as local conferences or participate in CTFs for team building. Or you can utilize social media such as X or LinkedIn. There are many different ways to network. Pick one and try it out. You do need to network. Step number 10, apply. The last step of this blueprint is to start applying for roles. This is where you'll begin to craft up your resume that is tailored towards a SOC analyst position and start applying to junior roles around your area. Do not look for remote opportunities just yet, as these can be quite limiting and pretty rare. If you have never created a resume before, I do have a resume template that you can find in the description. You'll also want to set up job alerts for SOC roles and continue to apply while networking, practicing your skills, and tackling different projects. Also, this is a great time to introduce you to a course created by TCM Security called Soft Skills, which will equip you with essential soft skills, communication techniques, and job application strategies to help you with this final step. You should now have a clearer path on how you can become a SOC analyst, but do note that this is going to take a lot of time. So I would suggest you stop right now and really ask yourself, is this something you really want to do? If so, I'm here to welcome you with open arms. As an FYI, I do have a PDF version for this blueprint that is pretty structured and has over 100 pages where it will contain all of the resources and many more. You can buy me dinner by purchasing this blueprint in the description down below. And for those that have purchased my no BS SOC analyst roadmap in the past, Please send me a DM on my socials with your email address and I'll send you this blueprint as this is an updated version of the roadmap that I created last year. That is it for the video and I do hope you found this informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.